Uh, thank you very much indeed, Steve. And uh, once you finish your excellent work here at UKIP, you can become my PR back. <laughs> That was a very good introduction, yeah. I've been given the sack more times than a postman at Christmas. Uh, and uh, I must admit, I'm quite relieved not to be working at News International at the moment. Uh, but why am I here? Well, I'm here to talk to you about uh, Vote UK out of the EU campaign. We used to be called the EU referendum campaign. We rebranded so that basically we said what we do on the tin. We don't want to renegotiate, we don't want to compromise, we want to get out of the EU. <laughs> and we've got many stunts and many events coming up over the next few months and I hope that you'll get involved with us. Have a look at our website, have a look at our Facebook and our Twitter feed, join us and help us. Work with us and of course we want to work with you. We also want to work with other EU sceptic groups and over the last year that I've been involved uh, in this campaign that's what we've been trying to do. But there is too much infighting on the EU sceptic movement. That needs to stop. We need to work together and let's face it UKIP have got the biggest role to play because you're the only people who we can possibly vote for or who give us what we want and what do we want? We want to get out of the EU. There are many campaign groups. There's us, there's the uh, People's Pledge and uh, lots of other groups as well who have got similar aims. But I went for a meal with Nigel Farage and one of the things I remembered, in fact, after all the Rioja we drank, the only thing I seem to recall <laughs> was he said to me, Gaunty, you can have as many protest groups as you want, as many campaigns and as many high profile supporters. But the only way you're going to get change in the end is by allowing the British people to put a cross against the name of a candidate and a party that wants and will deliver the out. And do you know what? Farage is 100% correct. And after the so-called veto, which was about as much use as a chocolate fire guard, we now see that Mr Cameron is not an EU sceptic. We now see that what Mr Cameron again did yesterday, no matter how he tries to spin it, he will not get us out of the EU. Do not believe the Daily Mail when they start cheerleading for him. He is not going to lead you to the promised land. He is not going to give you your country back. The only way you're going to get your country back, I'm afraid, is if you support people like Nigel Farage and indeed Paul after his excellent performance on Question Time and this particular party. A year ago, two years ago, whenever I was on Talk Sport and I was on Sun Talk and I used to interview Nigel, he was always great company and he was always what I call good box office. But I actually thought he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> in fact, I used another word, but I won't use it in polite company. I always thought he was a bit strange, a bit offbeat, that you were a bit fringy. As I've got to know you more, and actually over the same 18 to 24 months period, as you've got more organised and more professional, and for that you need to thank this man over here, Old Man Crowther. <laughs> I've realised that you lot aren't the swivel-eyed maniacs. The swivel-eyed maniacs are the fools who want to keep us in the EU, EU and keep de deluding and deceiving the British public. There's been... There's been a sea change in the British public. You've now got to organise like you are doing and capitalise on that. And also, I was at a lunch, again, uh, with Nigel Farage and indeed Paul Nuttall. This time it was Claret. And the, <laughs> the one thing I remember after that lunch was, and he shall remain nameless, the man who was hosting the lunch, and it was an extremely good lunch. And afterwards she said to me, Gaunty, they're the common sense party. The penny dropped for him, or was it the euro, and it dropped for me. You have got 
A lot of common sense policies. One of the major problems that you've got at the moment, if you don't mind me saying, and I do know a thing or two about communication, is you're not communicating that to the British public. You're more than just an anti-EU party. And more and more people are realising it. But that's the battle. And I was interested in hearing your local government spokesman a moment ago, and indeed the guy who wants to be the police commissioner as well. You've now got to start communicating those policies. You've got to say, yes, at our core, it's about the EU. And if we get out of the EU, things would be better. But look at these policies. I'm a lad who went to a comprehensive school and I've done quite well. But my brother went to a grammar school because he passed his 11 plus. For my kids to get the education that I got at a good comp, I've had to pay for them to go private. My kids are bright enough to go to grammar school. Why haven't they had the opportunity as a working class kid to do that like my older brother did? for 30 years. My stepbrother has just had 30 years in the police. They try to get rid of him on an A19. Luckily that's just been reversed. But that guy, the ex-copper you've just had on, he's right. We do want more bobbies on the beat. We don't want political correctness. We don't want our coppers fighting crime with one arm up their back. And we don't want our soldiers in foreign lands fighting with one arm up their political correct back. Chavs in our schools, disrupting our school lessons for the kids who want to learn. We don't want our estates run by the feral, the feckless, the freeloaders and the long-term useless. We want decent, honest policies that reflect decent, hard-working people. The harder the work, the more you get and the more you can keep in your own pocket to spend how you want to spend and live the life you want to earn. Conclusion. It's brilliant to see that they were using Facebook and again congratulations to Damien and congratulations to those of you who have been organising and developing the website. You've got to use modern technology as well as old fashioned boot leather to get your message over. But remember, you're not just an anti-EU party. You are a common sense party. You are not a bunch of bigots and racists. I've never met one racist whilst I've been involved in UKIP, not one single racist. There is nothing racist in saying that you like being English, Welsh or Northern Irish. There is nothing racist in saying you want to protect your Scottish. <laughs> I've got to be careful there, my daughter was born in West Lothian. And that's not the West Lothian question before you ask. But there's nothing racist about saying you want to protect your borders. Nothing whatsoever. There's nothing racist in saying you want to cut down on foreign aid and put money into this country. Nothing racist soever. There's nothing racist about saying you want your country back and you want to wrap yourself either in the flag of St. George or the Union flag. It's our flag. Take it back from the extremists. Don't let the Gardenistas run you down. You're a great party, you're going somewhere, get organised. Hey, and how about getting a few younger people involved as well? Young independence is coming on, we need more young people, because unfortunately there's too many people like me with grey hair, and there's a few too many people with no hair at all, Mr Nuttall. <laughs> so finally, thanks for inviting me, have a great conference. I'm sure you're going to do very well in the uh, local elections in May. It's been great getting to know you. I want to get to know you more. I've never told people how to vote in my whole career on the radio or as a columnist. I've always said to people, look at the evidence. And what I would say now is, look at the evidence and there is a party that will deliver you from the elitist, the expensive and the exclusive EU. And that party, I'm afraid, is UKIP. Thank you very much.